Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the XC European Outlook for today's second video. So, uh, as always on a Tuesday, we're having a look at the weather for the next 30 slash 42 days uh, for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well, using the latest update from the ECM.IM. INT uh, 42 day forecast, and I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, and if all of that wasn't enough, we've got a 10 to 14 day coming for you shortly. So uh, please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos. We thank you so very much, everybody. Ah, uh, for doing that. Right, okay. Thank you so much to ECMDev.int for supplying the charts as well, by the way. Thank you so much, GC. Right, going to start off with the uh, week one mean CO pressure and only taking us through the week that we're currently in. This is going to be from the 8th to the 15th of May. Uh, we've got two large areas of high pressure and mid low pressure in between. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got an area of high pressure in the Atlantic to the west. Southwest of the UK, Ireland, France, uh, to the west of France, Spain, Portugal. I've got another area of high pressure across eastern and northeastern parts of Europe, low pressure in the North Atlantic, and some lower pressure coming through the central and northwestern swathe of Europe as well, probably. 500 millibar height and only from the Arctic and the North Pole view down looks like that. High pressure centered to the north and the northeast, ridging to the high pressure in the Atlantic, top of low pressure across some southern parts of Europe and through central regions of the Mediterranean. Right, so this our temperature anomaly is looking in the uh, week ahead. Um, generally quite cool, actually, through most parts of Europe, but with exceptions. So we've got Scandinavia here looking uh, warm. Temperature anomaly is up to 3 to 6 degrees above normal. In some places, UK and Ireland also significantly above average temperatures there. Uh, also, perhaps below countries, one parts of Germany coming out with above average temperatures, and also uh, central southern parts of Spain and Portugal. That's the exception to the rule, though. Elsewhere, it's cooler than average, anywhere from like northern Spain all the way over to western, southwestern Russia. We see below average temperatures, particularly cool through these eastern parts of Europe, around the Black Sea, towards Ukraine. Um, and then going southwards, actually, towards Greece and Turkey. Bear in mind, these are anomalies to average, so it will still be relatively warm in uh, Greece, but nevertheless, it does look like much of Europe is going to be cooler than average in the week ahead. The UK and Ireland coming out with uh, above average temperatures as well, though, uh, this week. Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this, so uh, driving average through Spain and Portugal, much of northern and northeast Europe also coming out drier than normal. And then we get this wetter sway from France, UK and Ireland in the northwest and particularly down towards Italy, around the Asiatic into the Balkans. Looks very, very wet through those areas with heavy showers and uh, longer spells of rain in some places. It looks like it gets a little bit drier when we push over in towards the eastern side of the Mediterranean. But most of the bed, actually, or much of the bed, looks quite unsettled this week. And uh, that could include, like, Corsica, Sardinia, maybe down to Malta, into the Balearic Islands, uh, Mallorca, Minorca, Ibiza. Um, there'll be some big showers around in the week ahead. Uh, or during the week back, we're currently in, I suppose. Right, uh, week two will be the 15th to the 22nd of May. Let's have a look at this one, then. Uh, we've got a little bit of a ridge building in from off the Atlantic in towards the uh, far west of Europe, and some ridging in uh, the north and northeast Europe as well. Then low pressure looks like it's covering many other parts of uh, Europe there. How the 500 millibar heights looking? Let's have a look. So again, it remains significantly warm on average in the far north and northeast Europe. So again, Scandinavia over the Baltic Sea into Finland, into the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and also Lithuania as well. Very substantially above average temperatures through there. Southern and southwestern parts of uh, Spain and Portugal look warmer than average, and over towards Turkey and up to the southern shores of the Black Sea, uh, milder than average through there. Then we get the cooler than average uh, conditions. Again, they're extending from like eastern parts of Spain into France, and then anywhere eastwards over towards the uh, Black Sea. Much of the central part of the Med again looks cooler than average uh, next week, focusing on Italy around the Balkans, the Asiatic 
um, and uh, whatnot looks cooler through many southern parts of Europe, actually and warmer in uh, northern parts of Europe next week. And uh, precipitation-wise, from the 15th to the 22nd of May, we're looking like that. So really quite wet through the central part of the Med, again, over the Asiatic to the Balkans, and then eastwards into the Black Sea, and just to the south of the uh, Ukraine. Uh, looks wet through there. Northeast of that looks generally quite dry as we go into the Baltic Sea states and the northwest of Russia. And they're probably still relatively dry in the far west of Europe. Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal could be coming out drier than average through there. Right, week three will be the 22nd to the 29th of May. Let's have a look at this one. So a hint of a Scandinavian high event as we get into the uh, second half of May. Some high pressure around Scandinavia. Low pressure is across many southern and also west parts. You'll, you'll think that bringing the wind from the east across much of northern and also western Europe. The 500 millibar heights looks like that with a ridge of above average heights extending from the Atlantic into the north and west of the UK and also uh, Scandinavia as well. Below average heights across the Med and much of southern uh, Europe. So again, north south split, really drier, more anticyclonic in the north of Europe, and it looks like it's wetter, more low pressure dominate across southern Europe. Um, temperature wise, warmer though in uh, week three. We see a warm up taking place there, right away from Ireland and Portugal in the far west, all the way over to the Black Sea and uh, west and southwest parts of Russia in the east, and all points in between warmer than average, maybe just this eastern portion of the Meds, still a little bit on the cooler than average side. But it looks like there's a big warm up going on there across most parts of Europe in the third week. And precipitation looks like that's so driest in the north. That's from like Scotland to uh, Norway, Sweden, and uh, possibly up into Finland as well. Further southwards, it's wetter through Spain, Portugal, North Africa, a little bit unusually so for this time of uh, the year. And some eastern parts of Europe may be hinting at being a little bit on the dry side as well, although it is, as ever, a weakening signal when we get to week three for precipitation. Week four will be the 29th of May to the 5th of June. Again, we have lower pressure across the uh, southwest of Europe, higher pressure in the east, just drifting perhaps a little bit further east and uh, weakening a bit. 500 millibar heights, where are those? There we are, taking us from the 29th of May to 5th of June, look like that. So still some sort of ridge left across parts of Germany, maybe low pressure in the Atlantic. You do see a little bit of a blocking seen around Greenland uh, going on there as well. Temperature anomalies for week four, generally warmer than average, especially so through many of these western parts of Europe, but potentially particularly warm through like Germany, the low countries, France, Spain, Portugal, a bit more than average for the UK and Ireland, a little bit less so, and also Denmark, some parts of Sweden, and possibly into the Baltic Sea states as well. The southeastern corner again looks a little bit cooler from the Balkans to uh, the Black Sea and down into the east part of the Med, and then uh, Scandinavia, or Scandinavian Peninsula, I suppose, uh, not as warm uh, there through central and northern regions. Right, that's the evil. Oh, hang on. Yeah, well, I want to go to precipitation, get ahead of myself. So precipitation <laughs> for week four looks like that. And uh, it is a little bit on the dry side in the far north, northeast Europe, a little bit wetter down across the southern parts of Europe. Otherwise, the signal is weakening. Right, that's your 30-day forecast done. Let's just have a quick look at weeks five and six data before we go. So week five meets our pressure anomaly will be the 5th to the 12th of June. Um, this week, with some uh, with some lower pressure across some western parts of Europe, looks like it could be a little bit unsettled there. 500 millibar height anomaly doesn't show much of a signal. Precipitation, uh, temperature I should say, um, and <laughs> getting mixed up. Uh, still a little bit on the warm and average side across the far west of Europe. Otherwise, it looks like we're losing the signal or maybe even starting to cool down a little bit. Precipitation wise, it's a weak signal, but could be a bit on the unsettled side actually, especially across some of these northern and western parts of Europe. And then finally, week six will be the 12th to the 19th of June. How's that one looking? So wet, wet and average across some of these southern parts of uh, Europe there. Our 500 millibar heights looking like that. Again, quite a weak signal. Uh, temperature anomaly for week six. 
Hints are being a bit on warm side, especially in the far north and northeast. And lastly, precipitation of week six looks like that. So it looks quite wet through some of these central eastern parts of Europe, doesn't it? And again, particularly into the Mediterranean, which is quite unusual. Well, into June to be seeing wet and average um, conditions there. Uh, I can only assume there's like a weak pressure and maybe heavy thundery showers and downpours and whatnot. Uh, right, okay, so uh, that is it for your extended European outlook uh, for this week. Maybe just a snapshot of what the model is showing. It could look completely different when we look at the model again on Tuesday for the uh, European outlook. And also we'll look at this model on Saturday morning, just with a UK and Ireland focus mode uh, for that one. We are going to be back a little bit later on. We can send 14 there. That will include all of the regular features. Come back for that a little bit later. But for this week's ECM uh, WF Excelled European Outlook, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.